Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America. Check out the website, thisweekinamerica.us. Our guest on the program, Ricky Sanderson. He is a successful author. His new book is R&R, Relationship and Religion. He's also the author of the critically acclaimed H.H., Him to Her, Her to Him. Ricky is a father, grandfather, currently living in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, associate minister at a local church, teaches Sunday school, youth advisor, and he's with us on today's This Week in America to talk about his new book, R&R, Relationship and Religion. Ricky, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It is definitely our pleasure. We'll give you information on the book during the course of the program. First of all, I'm sure there are people saying, but boy, there are a lot of relationship books out there. And you're very honest in the beginning. This one's a little different because you haven't been real satisfied, have you, with the relationship books in the past? They sort of pit sexes against each other, men against women. And this really approaches it from a different angle. It does. It really does. And people can say there are a lot of relationship books out there. But, you know, there's not a lot of relationships book out there that deals with Bible principles. And that's what I really wanted to get out to people that, you know, if you are if you are a believer in God, then you should look at the, see what the Bible says about relationships and you'll be surprised, very surprised. The book is excellent. You lay out the different chapters. They're individual stories, people that have gone through problems, survived people that have gone through problems and have not survived. But it's really not a lot of short stories. Like you say, it's this biblical reference that sort of ties everything together. It makes it different from other books out there. Let's talk about your background because it's an interesting one. Uh, adopted at an early age by your aunt and uncle and really made you who you are today, right? Your mother and your father. Talk about them in the background and then that relationship they had and the importance that had in your life. Well, you know, like I said, I was adopted in, uh, by my, my aunt and uncle at uh, the age of two. But even with them, uh, they were married, I want to say, over 50-something years. And watching them, you know, show the love that they had for one another through, you know, ups and downs. And they both were, you know, very spiritual people. My mother was a uh, missionary. My father was a deacon at the church. And they always believed in, you know, those Bible principles. And they, they taught them to me. You know, uh, no matter what they went through, you know, I think every relationship has its problems. But when you can come together, when they're the me, I guess a me, a middle, a middle ground, which is the which is God. When you allow God to be the middle person, then you have something in common, and that kept them together. I mean, I I I, I remember, I remember a time that you know they had a, an argument about. Like, I don't, I'm not going to go into detail about it, but uh, my father left. He left home for a couple of days because my mother was mad at him. And he called back home. He said, how are things going? And I said, she's taking it out on me now. You need to come home. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, come back. <laughs> but when he came back, uh, he was apologetic, and she accepted him back. And uh, and we prayed. You know, we, we were a family that prayed. We prayed. Uh, we, my mother made sure we prayed in the morning, made sure we prayed before we went to bed. And we went to Sunday school on Sunday morning, church and, uh, that afternoon. Uh, so it really, it really kept us together as a family. And you, if you look at things nowadays, people don't have that. You don't see family staying together. They don't have that, that middle ground anymore because they've lost focus on what God has for them. Something that was so interesting with your mother is she really encouraged you to help other people. That's something that she did was help other people. And that really, and you've gotten into the ministry, and I'm sure that's a, that's a big part of it, reaching out and trying to help other people with their problems. That's that's true. My mother was a uh, nurse. She was a um, she was a registered nurse, and people that you know, like we grew up in Mississippi, and during the time you know, sixties and seventies, there was not a lot of health care available for a lot of people, and people that could not afford health care or just to go see a doctor for little small issues. My mother would take it upon herself to visit them and uh, care for them. Uh, and she became, she kind of came like the uh, community the community nurse because every time someone got sick, they would call and say, you know, Miss Sanderson, can you come see my mother? Can you come see my father? Or can you come see me? Uh, and she was, she was also a midwife. So people that could not afford, you know, to, to have you know, natural birth within a hospital, hit home birth. She was there. Uh, I want to say at least over 120-something kids she uh, helped bring into this world. 
So she was, she did it all. She did a lot. <laughs> Our guest on This Week in America is Ricky Sanderson. His book is new book, R&R, Relationship and Religion. Ricky's website is rsander, S-A-N-D-E-R, com. Information available at our website, and you can link on at uh, thisweekinamerica.us. The book's available, Barnes & Noble, Amazon as well. And talking about your dad, and so many people can relate to this, it wasn't until later years when your father was having health problems, when you were together with him, I think it was actually Memorial Day weekend, when you both expressed your love for each other, and then your father later said, "Don't ever tell anybody that I said that." That sort of that uh, that protective uh, shield, isn't it? That, uh, that sometimes dads dads put up. They want to show that weakness. They want to let you know they love you, but they really don't want to verbalize it. That's right. That's true. And you know, most men like that. You know, they have that. Yeah. You know, that macho image that you know. And he was. He, my father worked on the railroad all his life, and. You know, so he always was the, the big, strong figure in my life, and I never saw him cry or break down. But like I said, that Memorial Day weekend, he called me and, and asked me to come home to help do some things around the house. And as we sat outside on a, you know, warm, warm summer night, he or warm summer evening rather, he looked over at me and asked me, you know, he said, "How do you see me?" And I said, uh, "You've always been my father. You know, you you're the only father I ever known." And I thank you for all that you've taught me. And I told him I loved him. He said, I love you too. He said, but don't tell anyone you, I ever told you that. And, <laughs> my, and my mother was standing in the door and she said, after all these years, you finally told him that you loved him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. And there's so many in the book. And we're going to talk about some of the relationship issues here in a second. But one thing, your dad steered you in the right direction. As you're young, I'm young. I mean, maybe 10, 11, 12 years old. And you're deciding... I'm sort of attracted to a couple of young women and I'd, I'd like to maybe get their attention. Your dad said there's more to building a relationship than splashing on old spice. And we've all <laughs> gone through that, that, uh, you know, we sort of measure how things are going by the amount of old spice that's left in the jar. Once we get that splashing all over it, your dad was like, no, 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 no. You don't need that much of that. That's right. That's true. Uh, and you know, and like you said, as young men, you know, we, we get to that point of in our life that, you know, we want to impress ladies and, that was my moment there, and I said, hey, I want to be, you know, at my best when I go to church. And it's funny, I met the young lady at church. You know, my first crush was a young lady in my Sunday school group, and I wanted to uh, impress her. So, you know, splashed on up, you know, went, went in and splashed on the Old Spice, kind of bathed in it, rather. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, no, that's, he said, son, that's too much. He said, come here, watch that. He said, go watch that off and let me show you how to do it. He said, because you want, you know, you, you don't want to be over, over endearing for a woman. You want her to see you in a certain type of way. And he began to explain these things to me. And, and it, it resonated. With, in fact, uh, with my own sons, I took the time and the same thing that he showed me and taught me, I talked to my sons. And now my oldest son is married and he has four kids of his own. And he's teaching his kids the things that I, my, grand, my, my father taught me. So... It's passed on from generation to generation. Either you're gonna pass on a good a good impression on how to be in uh, in a relationship, or you're gonna give a bad impression. And I think he gave me a good impression on, on what relationships are, and I've passed that down to my sons. Ricky Sanderson, our guest on this week in America, the book is R and R Relationship and Religion. Available all across the country. Information at our website thisweekinamerica.us and uh, Ricky's website R Sander. S-A-N-D-E-R-1 dot com. In the book, you, you tell stories and people that have shared things with you. Like I said, the, and some have come out in, in a positive way. Others just weren't able to make that relationship work. A common problem you addressed in, in the story of Keisha, Mark, and Paul, and that's infidelity in a relationship. And so often people, uh, once there is infidelity, they feel the, the relationship is over with. Talk a little bit about that story, the outcome, and this whole problem of trying to juggle infidelity and to try to maybe work through it. You know, that's that's one of the biggest things. With, uh, I say the worst enemy of a relationship is infidelity. Uh, and the, the story with Keisha, Mark, and Paul was that Keisha understood that she did have a good husband, a man, you know, a husband that provided for her. But in her life, there was something missing, I guess, the excitement of, something that was missing in her life and so she chose to have a relationship outside of marriage but uh, if you you know and doing this 
talking to them, I decided to do a study and a research on it, and I found out that 90% of all marriages fall apart because of infidelity. But with her marriage, uh, she realized the mistakes she had made, and she turned to God to correct that. And that's the thing. God will forgive. God forgives us for our, our wrongdoing. And if God is able to forgive us for our wrongdoing, then we have to forgive our, our mates and spouses because uh, we we take those vows for richer, for poor, for better, for worse. Worse is infidelity. So if you say, I marry you for worse, then you should be able to get over that. Or I won't say get over it, but forgive and move on from that infidelity because if you can survive those little things, then that relationship will will grow stronger. And believe it or not, that, that one time will be the only time if you can survive that, survive it. We tend to blame so many things on infidelity. Opportunity is always something that comes up that, yeah, that's a reason it, it was available. It was something new. It was exciting. And you talk in the, in the book, Arm and Arm, Relationship and Religion, one of the, the great, greatest cause of, of infidelity is loss of affection. And that seems like something, if we're aware of it, is, is correctable. It is. It is. Um, loss, of, loss, of, loss of affection comes in so many kind of ways, you know, uh, especially with two couples working. You know, if two couples are trying to, you know, establish a career. They, they get caught up in their career and forget about one another. And then before you know it, it's like, you know, where, what happened? What happened to us? You know, where did we go wrong? You know, where did we lose each other? But uh, my, I always tell people like this, when you start dating someone, it was you, you decided to, you decided to go out and pursue this person. So the same ambition that you had to pursue them to begin with, you have to find that ambition once again to keep that person. Uh, my, you know, my dad told me one time, he said, uh, a car is only new once. If you buy a car, it's only new once. But if you maintain that vehicle, it will last you way past its way past its due date. That's why we had those classic automobiles out there. Yes. Love so much. yes. Because when they were new, they weren't classics. They were new. But they were well maintained over the years that they became classics. So I always tell people, I want a classic woman in my life. She's new when I when I receive her. But if we may, if she and I maintain our relationship, you know, there will, there's going to be some, there's going to be some repairs and things along the way. But once we get past that twenty year mark, now I become a classic to her, and she becomes a classic to me. And we love classic vehicles because they're <laughs> they're sleek and they're pretty, they're sexy. Yes. So if you can if you can find that same concept in your relationship after after that ten year ten year mark that twenty year mark. Uh, it becomes classic, and you love being in it. Ricky Sanders, our guest on the program. His book is called Relationship and Religion. The website is rsander1.com. Information at our website, this week in America.us. And talking about th- that relationship, you say that marriage is a long and time-consuming process. If we get involved in thinking this is going to be easy and the sparks that we have early on in a marriage are going to stay there, you're wrong. It does require work, and it is an ongoing That's- process. It does. Uh, I think that's what people fail to look at. Uh, marriage is a long, it's a long drawn out process. Uh, it's an investment. It's an it's a long term investment, and you have to be willing to put put into it. I mean, just like a four hundred one k. You know, you don't cash a four hundred one k in as soon as you get it. You invest. You put money into it. You watch it grow, and you know that when you go to your retirement stage, that you have this allotted sum back there. Same thing with a marriage. When you start a marriage, most people look at a marriage, okay, it's, I'm here, I'm in it, you know, it's now. They don't look down the road at what's, in, you know, what's involved, you know, you know, family structure, you know, where we're going to live, what we you know, what, how we're going to maintain. It's, it is a long-term investment. But those that are willing to go through that time and that, I wouldn't say uh, go through that process, then those are the ones that come out on top. Uh, those are the ones that actually, you know, I like, I like going to the park and you see old couples in the park and you look at them and you always say, well, how did they make it so many years? How many, how, you know, how could they make it those, those number of years? But when you talk to them, they'll tell you, you know, the ups and downs. And I like to hear the downs because 
if you can understand what they went through when they were down, then you understand why they're together when they're up. Makes perfect sense. The book is Relationship and Religion, R&R, Relationship and Religion. Ricky Sanderson, our guest on the program. The book is uh, available all across the country, Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. You can find information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Rapidly running out of time, and you close in talking about, there's a, a question from Leslie, and I think this was a Facebook posting. What is it in the heart of a man that he can live with a woman and prefer to have her as a girlfriend and not as a wife? And you were saying, yeah, this really deserves a little bit of attention. That That's a really good question. And I'm sure you, you hear that a lot. What are your thoughts on that? You know, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible about, and everybody always knows the scripture about the woman at the well. Jesus met a woman at the well, and Jesus told her all about everything she did. But what Jesus said to her, he said, go tell your husband, go get your husband. And the woman said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you, you, you answer correctly because the man that you're with now, said, you had five husbands, and the man that you're with now is not your husband. Uh, so she was living with a man. She was living with a man, and Jesus, Jesus pulled that out of her. But when she went back, she didn't go back to him. Uh, the thing is, marriage is, is honorable in the sight of God. And the difference between, I always say the difference between a person that lives with a, lives with a, lives with a mate and instead of marriage, they, they are not willing to go through the sacrifice to, to establish a relationship. When you marriage, then you get you're willing to go through all the sacrifices and things that 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 makes a marriage perfect. But when you live with someone, you say, "Well, you know, when things get rough, I can bail out. I can leave, I can leave and go to somebody else." But when you're married, you just can't jump ship. You know, you have to go through the divorce process and all that. But when you're just living with someone, it's just you know, hey, what's that old saying? Why buy why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? So you're getting free milk, and then when, they, when the milk turns sour, you're ready to get a new cow. Got about a so. minute or so left in the program, and I want to go back to where we started this. And you really feel that to have a successful relationship, God has to be part of it. And you've right. seen that in, in dealing with people in, in the church, with the couples you talk to. Uh, as we're wrapping up here, talk about that importance, because that really has to be at the center of that relationship. Yeah, the Bible says... Uh, but uh, except God be in it, uh, except God build a house, you labor in vain. So, and then also it tells us in Genesis that when God, when when God first made Adam, He looked upon Adam and said, "It's not good that man be alone. I'll make him a help meet." And I think that's where a lot of problems go wrong too. People think most men think that they possess the woman, but the woman is not a possession. She's a helper. She's your partner, an equal partner. You know, like like two businesses coming together, you merge together and you become one big, you know, powerful corporation, and that's what God wants from uh, from couples. You know, throughout the Bible, you read even Paul said, as you know, it's better for a man to marry than to burn. You know, so uh, it's a stab- it's it's an established, you know, in the Bible that marriage is honorable. And but we, you know, so many people now don't want to go through that process because. They don't want to deal with the long-term investment. But uh, I like the idea of being married because the long-term investments are very great. You know, the, what the, uh, the outcome has very substantial, you know, good good endings to it. And, I, you know, I, I, I want to grow old with somebody myself. I want the relationship my mother and father had. Uh, they live a good, you know, my father, in his old, old years, he said, uh, you know, my, he said, my mother did so many things for him when he was healthy, you know, and she, she endured a lot. So when my mother had Alzheimer's, so he took care of her. He said, there was a time when she took care of me. He said, now it's my time to take care of her. And he took care of her and he stuck with her the best he could until he passed away. And that always resonated with me that, you know, through thick and thin, you know, you know, you have to stick it out and be there for one another. We are unfortunately out of time on the program. Went by way too quickly. Our guest on the show has been Ricky Sanderson. Ricky's book is R&R, Relationship and Religion, also author of HH, Him to Her, Her to Him, which is available as well on uh, Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. Also with the website, Ricky's website is rsander1.com. 
And we'll have all that information up on our website this week in America.us. Ricky, thank you for sharing that on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me, too. You are listening to This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us.